I'm just going to click record and go. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. it's the Mike Rovin Podcast. Check this out. Got to play my formal introduction. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mike Rovin Podcast. <laughs> I love it. With another episode. It's great to be back behind the microphone. As always, doesn't happen nearly enough, but you know, uh, such is the way of the world these days. I appreciate everybody listening and, and being part of this and uh, providing feedback and, and, and comments. So it's it's what's keeping me going during this podcast week after week through uh, this this crazy world that we're living in. Um, and to maybe help uh, shine some light or um, understand some insight into this crazy world that we're living in, I am joined by uh, one of my dear friends, Sarah Winslow, uh, who is a psychic intuitive, uh, spiritual guidance counselor, uh, so many things, Sarah, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me on, Mike. I'm really glad to be here. I don't think, um, really good. yeah, I don't know that psychic, intuitive, spiritual guide even sums up, uh, who you are, what you do. How, <laughs> how do you define what you do? Um, I, I define myself as a psychic medium and spiritual teacher, counselor, um, and artist, because that's my other side gig, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I mean, professionally, that's what I would do, because I've been, that's what I've been titled as professionally for over 20 years now. So um, hmm. I guess that's my title, you know, but <laughs> I'm yeah. many, there's many layers to me, you know, um, around that whole subject. It's very, I think that the, I think a lot of people have a really um, tight view of what those words mean, you know, very, very, you know, yeah. prejudiced in a way so, sort of um uh, and it's like i the way that i explain it to people is that it's way way more than that uh, in my at least in my world that i've experienced because it's that's why i can't really just type title myself as an intuitive or like uh or a medium because it, it's so many vast things in one sort of gift to give you know right. um and yeah so Mm -hmm. It is. I know it's, it's me. <laughs> it's, there's a lot of different interpretations to it. Um, I just actually had the opportunity to chat with another great friend of mine, Misty Coolidge, um, and that podcast will actually air next week. So stay tuned for that. Um, she too is a really strong, powerful woman uh, who's created herself genuinely um, and continues to work in, in a way that's, you know, empowering and positive for herself, for the world, for women. Yeah. For young girls and and so now i'm i'm blessed to have two powerful women here uh, <laughs> I, I put you sort of in that you know same boat um and so I'm, I'm really grateful and blessed and especially in this world where there's a lot of tearing down and, and ripping apart you know oh, yeah. I'm, I'm blessed to know uh, women who are building up and, and empowering yeah. you know others yeah. particularly is that something you always saw for yourself or you know sort of how did you come into this um yeah. it's maybe kind of two separate questions it's interesting. Yeah, I would say yes. I don't I don't know if I cognitively thought that when I was younger, but I always knew and felt I was here to help people or things. First, it was animals. I was really, I was a super, you know, I would, would walk home and I was always bring home hurt birds and salamanders and hmm. my parents, you know what I mean? I would find the mice in the house and try to have them in my bedroom, you know? <laughs> I just wanted to save things all the time when I was younger. And then, you know, in, in hindsight, like looking through the lens of life review, um, even in my teens and in my childhood, I, I would tend to always care for those that are were wounded in some way you know um i would just they would gravitate towards me you know uh the wounded peoples yeah. <laughs> even even as a child um it was like that i have vivid memories of you know talking to the one kid that was hurting you know in some way or form even on the playground um and then, you know, I actually went to college for art. I was a painting major at college. And it, it was like I was trying to hide from being pushed in front of the world, you know, because an artist is a very quiet sort of career. Yeah. And, you know, as fate would have it, um, I tell people I didn't choose to do this. I was dragged, pushed and pulled into it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because um, it's it's like my, my wiring is um, like profoundly intuitive, you know, um, 
And, uh, and then, you know, with the arrival of my sons is when I, I say came out of the psychic closet. Okay. Um, yeah. So it was like their, their arrival in my world sort of, it was the initiative I needed to sort of be the person I always was. Um, and never really knew it. I did know it, but I didn't know it, if that makes sense. Right. So that was kind That's of a weird. turning point. You, realized you maybe wanted to sort of do this in a, in a more, you know, consistent way. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I ever really wanted to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's the weird thing. I, I was literally sort of, I have a couple really fun stories about how I sort of came into it. It's like I had a friend that told me I should be doing them readings and sessions for people and I was just you know refusing refusing and then she said hey let, I'm having a dinner party why don't you come and I said okay she said she said I said what do you want me to bring she said wine and bread and I said great I'll see you at six and she said I said who's coming she said oh just all the normal girls and uh I went and I didn't know anybody there and I walked in and I didn't know there wasn't my normal gaggle of girls with her and she looked at me and she said, sorry, I fooled you. You're going to do sessions for each of these people in my back bedroom. Wow. And she said, just 15 minutes. And I promised that to them. So I did that. And she like pushed me in the room with these women one by one. And um, I thought, I mean, I just was talking to them. That's how it felt to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I left and everybody was staring at me and I thought I really flunked, you know? <laughs> right. And she said, do you want to stay and have dinner now? And I said, no, I don't actually. I was really mad at her. <laughs> <Right>. Sure. <laughs> so I left and I was driving home and she called me on my flip phone. The right. <laughs> Remember those? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Take the little antenna up, right? And she, I said, I think I just screwed up. I'm really mad at you. And she said, Sarah, everyone was silent because you blew their minds. Yeah, I bet. And, and I pulled over to the side of the road and I started crying. Hmm. And I looked up and I said, you better make this fun. <laughs> <laughs> because it was like, I knew how daunting it would be to like have this title, you know, in, in the world of, um, you know. People that don't understand, but I've been, I was, I was literally a born spiritual person. I was spiritual my whole childhood. Um, you know, one of my favorite things when I was a, uh, my minor was art history in college. And the reason why I liked art history is because I used to love the history of all of us through art, hmm. you know, the story of us through like all religions, all all areas of the world you know people and its struggle and its quest for something much greater has always fascinated me right ever since i was a little kid hmm. so i mean that that was i would say that was my my first push is just this intense need to know something much greater than just this right you know what i mean yeah absolutely yeah and it, it probably takes most people a lot longer period of time to get to that place really yeah if at all. Yeah. You know, apparently I signed up early. So, I, so you know, I, I, I became, I guess what you might call spiritually awakened. Um, I think in my early twenties, sometime around that time frame. Um, a friend of mine that I worked with at the time gave me a book called conversations with God. Yep. Really kind of like opened my eyes to this whole sort of like creating your own reality thing, mm -hmm. kind of become who, you, you know, you know, you bring into your existence that which you think about and what you manifest. Uh -huh. And then I learned about the law of attraction sometime shortly thereafter and read that Ask and It Is Given book. And yep. literally since that time, I feel like my compass has really been dictated by trying to stay in that sense of alignment. Like once you understand that, you can't ever unsee it, unknow it. No. How do you, yeah. you know, how do you navigate that? How do you sort of live in that day to day where we're kind of, you almost live in this world where there's these sort of social norms we're always trying to fit in, which often feel out of alignment with who. Yeah. You know, how do you do that? Well, it's interesting. You know, I, you know, I tell people all the time, I often quote spinal tap <laughs> 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 when I say, you know, everybody's psychic, but mine's turned up to 11. You know, I, this one goes to 11, you know, Frank um, and rip the knob off. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, the knob fell off or something. But I think when the, it is difficult. But the thing is, is we as humans, our actual nature is to, we're supposed to grow and sometimes fall back and then grow. And 
the whole point of being sort of on a spiritual journey and wanting more, um, well, more meaning to the existence of our living is to understand that it's sort of a consistent and constant cycle of growth. You know what I mean? So like, for example, you finding those books in your twenties, which is sort of like when I was discovering this stuff uh, is well, my teens and twenties, but um, it's like following that urge, following the urge to know more. It's, it's innate in us, I think, you know, and, and when we, when we close out and we don't want to do it, we don't grow and it, 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 and our relationships suffer and um, our career paths suffer. And um, so seeking is actually, I think we're, it's in our, it's in us to seek and to know and to, 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 to secure a, a more, um, yeah, a more meaningful feeling of existence, right. you know? Otherwise, everything's a little cold, dark, and monotonous. You right. know what I mean? Right, right. Although yeah. it seems like in, in, in this current world, we've, you know, we've come to just accept that or we're told we should just accept that when, like you say, it's always sort of pushing and pulling you. Um, yeah. and you're struggling with accepting it or, or listening to it. Yeah. And, you know, that's the thing is, is it's, you know, I love that quote or something that says like, there's a quiet voice inside, always listen to it. It's like, I tell people that intuition and the search for meaning is, is like a little tiny little gnome voice inside of you. And it's like, <laughs> it's always there. And you're like, what's that? What's that? It's like, you're like, what is that? Mm -hmm. But you, if you're not taught about it, or you don't seek information about what that means, um, it, we tend to not hear it anymore. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, it, it's too quiet. Right. You know? Yep. Um, Absolutely. And when you, when you're on a journey and you're on a spiritual journey and you want to know more, it tends to get louder, you know, the voice within. Sure. And um, so it's more, it's more easy to follow it then, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it's it takes nurturing. Very, exactly. It's a muscle. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's interesting way, you know, way to put it. When we first met, which I think was around 2014 or somewhere in that time frame, our first reading or meeting, yeah. um, you really opened up my mind to the whole um, notion of spiritual guides or angel guides, which even in my spiritual journey up until that point, I really wasn't aware of. And, you know, you had said that, you know, everyone has them and it's different for everyone. Some have one, some people have 10 um, and everyone and they all look different. Um, and you know tapping into them and learning to hear and understand them is is also a, a um you know a muscle or a strength how does one learn how to tap into that and understand their own spiritual guides yeah you know it's funny i get that question a lot you know someone will come in for a session with me about random things it could be a death in the family it could be a career change it could be a moving house or random many many subjects but weirdly even if someone comes in with those things, they often like at the last minute in the session, they say, I want to know how to get in touch with these guys that are talking to you, which I like. I like the fact that people, you know, want to understand this, that there is an existence beyond this plane where there is a community of energy, peoples or beings hmm. that are assigned to help us to grow here you know by guiding us um saving us sometimes i've had many stories about spirit guides intervening in human world to save someone from something wow um, if that's their destiny mm -hmm. and the reason i the, the way that you get a hold of them is number one you got to learn a little bit how to meditate mm -hmm. you know and i come at it from a little bit of a different definition of meditation to be honest with you, it's not like transcendental meditation or something like that. It's like meditation to hear something that's beyond our realm, you know, with sometimes in a guided meditation, I recommend that all the time. You, you know, there's guided meditations to meet a spirit guide. Um, and you basically, you know, get quiet. And I, I mean, I teach classes in this and it's, which are really popular, but the first thing I say, and this is going to sound a little weird, but I say, like you're gonna think you're imagining it, hmm. okay? Right. Right. And then often it, it goes from there, you know, almost like a dreamscape, like, like you're dreaming it. And not everybody can access understanding, like seeing them through their inner vision, mm -hmm. uh, third eye, you know? Um, 
but sometimes people can feel them or they get an essence of them. A lot of times, and most of the time, these spirit guides or guardians, um, ancestors, people that have passed, you know, they'll leave us signs everywhere in all the time. We're repeating numbers, uh, pennies, birds, uh, you know, birds of a certain nature, feathers, a uh, word. Sometimes they'll see a certain trigger word that you'll see like randomly on a m- newspaper or something that means something to the person. Yeah. It's like, it's like you assign meaning to it and then it responds to you. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It's, in- <laughs> it's cool. Yeah. And, and again, I, we see those things. We have those occurrences in daily life and often just sort of toss them aside or really don't give them much second thought. Right. I think the repeating numbers thing is most common yeah. for everybody, yeah. you know, um, and even me, like uh, if I know change is coming when I see 555, five, five, mm-hmm. I, I literally will know that I'm in a progress cycle change. Like, for example, I just moved and like maybe two months prior, that's all I saw. Wow. Yeah. Life up everywhere on my clock, you know, at the thing at the store, you know, yep. at the, on my receipt at a, at the gas station. It's weird. You know, it is. It's three, three, three for me. That's always the one that, that I've seen. That's interesting. So do, do you, and do you just assign a meaning to it? Do you understand what it means? No, I don't think I have. I, it just, I guess it just gives me some comfort, some reassurance when I see it. Yeah. And that's kind yeah. of what it is. It's interesting. A lot of people, have like repeating numbers that remind them of someone who's passed, you know, and they don't know why they know it that it's just that the, you know, just there. Um, a lot of times you could Google this and, you know, I, I try to tell people like, be careful what you look at it the, on the internet. <laughs> Absolutely. <Yep. laughs> yeah. That's why I say, you know, you, you got to learn how to trust yourself first and foremost in, in here, the gut, you know, yep. that gut knows, you know, Absolutely. yeah. Are there other, you know, tips that you might be able to offer or suggestions you can give, you know, for, for people to just help, you know, tune into or fine tune, you know, their intuition a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I recommend like, number one meditation. Okay. But it can also be moving meditation. That means like walking in nature uh, without your, without your headphones on, you know, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> and without, you know, you can be alone or maybe even with a person, but like getting really tuned into nature is it t- tends to reconnect us and it grounds us. It makes us feel more centered. And when we're centered, we tend to not be as stressed out, avoiding stressors, avoiding the media, yeah. the news, right. all these things dampen our, what we call our primal intuitive nature. Um, because it, it just all of a sudden, because we have brains, you know, it goes into fight or flight. It goes into overanalyzing. It goes into stuff and, and the noise starts. Anything away from the noise of the world, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I, you know, I tell people to it's start some sort of a personal spiritual practice of some sort, you know? I mean, some people feel more connected to spirit or the, the universe through churches and mosques and temples. Um, and, but some people it's nature, you know, right. and some people it's surfing and some, you know, yeah. some people it's through like connecting with other people and some people it's through connecting with animals, you know, so something that's like, I know a lot of people that are really, really um, feel like in tune when they're out, like feeding their horses or something, you know, yeah. and they kind of like feel in touch. It's like when you're in touch with things. That's how you, and it's, that's why I said, it doesn't have to be a formal practice of something, right? you know, Yeah. but these are all simple ways of getting in tune, you know, it, but I, yeah, I tell people like, put down your tablet, your smartphone, your TV. <laughs> yeah. Quiet down the noise, I guess that's quiet the- down the noise, yeah. quiet down the noise. And we are really used to um, drowning out silence and drowning out quiet time. You know what I mean? Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. I would have to assume um, with everything going on in the world right now, your phone and your email must be blowing up with people just want, you know, wanting to meet with you to just get some understanding of what this all means for themselves, for the world, for who we are, you know, moving forward. Um, you know, what, what do you do or what can you offer people who, who are meeting with you now to get some understanding? Well, it's interesting. 
I'm busier than I've ever been. Sure. As one would imagine, actually, regular counselors and therapists as well are booked solid. You can, sure. It's hard to, hard to even get in with anybody. Yeah. Um, as well as I've noticed, I was just talking to an acupuncturist. Um, I was at a lovely acupuncture appointment the other day, and he said he's mighty busy as well. So all the people that do any form of helping right now are extremely busy. And, you know, people are asking big questions when they come in, and they have since last year. And I'm finding that, like, refreshing and, and good. Yeah. And, and, uh, and an awakening. People are awakening big time. Mm -hmm. So like someone like me, I offer them anything that they come in with. We kind of tackle that. There's been a lot around people being um, unhappy in relationships that they thought they were happy in. Hmm. You know, um, maybe also changing course of careers entirely, yeah. entirely. Like, a, 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 like a huge change and that's a big thing because if you're in a family or if you're in a partnership or something it brings all those people into the into the mix so I mean I think it's everything a lot of people to be honest with you have had a sense of just non-going away sorrow <laughs> yeah just an underlying yep. blue not not like overtly depressed just blue mm -hmm. and lost Right. You know, so we go back to what we were just talking about, about trying to assert more meaning around the search for something grander and that, that has more purpose, maybe, you know. Um, so we usually tackle those things, you know, each person is a little different and everyone's at a different trajectory in the course of their own awakening or their own search um, or their own earthly problems or non problems, right. you know. Um, so it's, it's different for everybody, but it's thematic me, th thematically, because I have clients all over the globe. Hmm. It's interesting to see the similar feelings for people that are in Europe and strange. Right. That, that sense of we miss each other. Uh, uh, we, people have missed people. Yeah. And um, missed community, you know, because hmm. even though this is a fabulous tool, you know, the internet and to being able to do this, sure. it doesn't replace, it doesn't replace the real thing, the real deal, the one-on-one, -on -one, the touching, you know, all, all that, you know, so people have been sad. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when you do readings with others, are you channeling their spirit guide, so to speak, or are they your own that's coming through or how does that work in your, in your readings? Interesting. It's a good question. Um, it's all, of that it's I, I i'm channeling their spirit guides their loved ones or ancestors and they they give me information to give to them that's about their life and then sometimes i will listen to my guides who are more like teaching me how to go about what i'm supposed to say it, i tell people <laughs> yeah. i don't know did, did you ever see um bruce almighty yeah movie? Yeah, yep, yeah. Right, yep. I tell people a lot that that scene where he doesn't know that he's hearing everyone's prayers and he wakes up and he's going like, yeah, right, right. That's kind of what it sounds like to me. Hmm. I can like, that's what I hear. It's like five conversations at once. And, and like, my job is to surpass um, and translate it all into words that make sense. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Right. Yeah, no big, no big thing. No big deal. We're all counting on you, but no big deal. <laughs> right. And that's hard. I mean, that's, you know, to make sense of all that's difficult. I have a hard enough time concentrating when I'm chatting with my wife and my kids are talking to me at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I would say this is a pretty good job for someone with pretty bad ADD. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, right. but it, it's weird. It's like channeling it into one thing. It's like I can be listening and talking and hearing a new conversation or a new sentence coming in that's supposed to come in in like five minutes. Wow. I don't know how I do it, to be honest with you. <laughs> One of my clients the other day said, wow, Sarah, does this wipe you out? <laughs> yeah, that's what I would think too. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, I used to be able to do more back in the day, you know, but the amount of people I've done this for over the amount of the many years, it's just like, I can't do as many. And, and, you know, that's also why I do classes and events and stuff, you know, so it's a different form of teaching through a larger scope, 
you know, instead of the one-on-ones, although everyone loves their one-on-ones, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Have you been doing a lot more through Zoom like this as opposed to doing in-person Yeah. Meetings? Yeah. I mean, I've had, I've been doing sessions on Skype and phone for eons. So, okay. and then when this all went down last year, um, got onto Zoom. Did, so I, now I do Zoom, FaceTime, in-person and Skype <laughs> and phone. So it's really what the person prefers and what they want. Uh, you know, I've, I'm doing a lot more in person now because people want to come see me. So, mm-hmm. but I have clients far, far away. So that's how I do it. Yeah. And can you just turn those voices off? I mean, how are you not sort of walking down the street hearing all this chat? Yeah. No, no, no. I turn off my taxi sign. Yeah. Right. Uh, like right. off duty, uh, you know, and then I'm just a normal person who has to run to Hannaford to get groceries and wondering what she's going to make for dinner. Right. And then people don't ask you, don't you know the lottery numbers or something like that? I mean, it's like this. Oh, makes- I've gotten all those questions, yeah. you know, or, or like you're a medium, you look like a small or, you know, <laughs> oh my God. I, yeah, you know, that's not, um, that's not what this is about. You know what I mean? I, I, I definitely tell people who refer to it as fortune telling and stuff like that. It's like, those are archaic definitions of this. Um, there's a book that I'm in called the gift within like following no I, th- I think it was by Marianne Borer uh, you can get it on Amazon but it's it, the, the 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 book's purpose is it's interviewing like the well, some of the top 33 psychics across the world but and we each have a chapter but her point in the book is this is a genuine form of healing mm-hmm. and I don't really worry about people's thoughts on it because I've been busy for it many many years and I have done sessions for every type of human yeah. out there right you know, of all sorts of races, creeds, colors, religions. So um, it's pretty interesting. I mean, I'm sure there's certain sectors that don't come in too much, but um, people have found great healing in this, in this, yeah, in this type of work. And I know you have. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, over the years, I've done it long enough now that I've seen an increase in men Hmm. coming in. Yeah. So and an increase in younger people coming in. Um, yeah, definitely statistically speaking, you know, just based on averages. Yeah. Um, it used to be mostly women and I don't, and that's changing for sure mm-hmm. over the last between four and six years. Well, it's interesting because, you know, we seem to, we're putting ourselves on display now more than ever, right? We're, we're Facebooking, Instagramming, Snapchatting, TikToking, podcasting. You know, <laughs> we're putting ourselves out there, but you know, we're also asking for feedback and judgment and reaction and response. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and, and that can be tough. And, you know, what, what effects can that have on us personally and collectively if we're, again, talking about alignment, you know, you're putting yourself out there to be judged. Right. That's, that's tricky. You know, that is, and it's kind of a bit of an epidemic. And quite frankly, it's the opposite of what we've been talking about, where you, your main job to grow is to find out who you are through mm-hmm. how you feel, you know, the source of one, you know. Um, and when you know that, I don't think you need to be bothered by what people think about you as much, you know, or need that approval or need that understanding or even all the subjects that come in around that, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So it's kind of fascinating, you know, that our culture is so strange. (laughs) Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And it it helped me with the strength to do this. I mean, I definitely have uh, had a challenge, you know, just moving forward with things because I'm constantly basing my decisions on what other people might think. Right. Um, but what helped me, I think, move forward with this was to say, this is for me. I don't really care if anyone even watches this. This is something yeah. I want to do. Yeah. But I think about in terms of your comment about how younger people are seeking this kind of information and assistance from you. They don't, I don't know, have the, the sort of wherewithal to really make those distinctions. And they're putting it, I mean, look at my 14 year old daughter putting herself out there. And this is now how they're judging their like success in life is how many likes they get on things or how many followers they have. That's right. really hard. It is really hard. And, you know, it's funny. It's just a new form of what we used to do anyway. If you think about it, like back in the days when like Twiggy was a model, everyone got super skinny after that, you know, and there wasn't even big media, you know, there wasn't any internet and all that jazz. But 
I mean, all that stuff essentially comes from, and I'm, this is such an overused word that I'll just use it as a, as a source of understanding is like, it comes from the shadow. It comes from the egoic body trying to suppress the innate knowing of our own beauty, of our own happiness, of our own purpose. You know, it's like, it's like, um, those are ways of quite frankly, self-sabotage, you know, of being, letting yourself get subjected by the need for approval of likes or something like that. I mean, it's like, it's certainly not helping. And there's some people out there that don't think about it. There's some that do, you know, it, it, it's in very innate, <laughs> actually my sons, my eldest is 23 mm -hmm. and he told me a long time ago to not give a toot about what anyone says. He, it, it like, for my sons, they don't let, 18 and 23 now, mm -hmm. um, they don't let it bother them, that world. You know, and, and a matter of fact, I think that's almost like they don't, they're like pushing that world away. It's like it's served its purpose for them. And they now they want something different. Yeah. And there are people uh, in their age groups that are similar. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, <laughs> they're doing what they should do is just using the internet as a tool and not taking it in. But, you know, it takes practice and it takes maturity. Mm, absolutely. You know. Yep. 100%. So, yeah. Mm. But. I, 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 yeah, it's, it's wild. And we do, we, you know, we feel for the younger people in that they like sort of like younger teen years right now. And especially over this past year, oh my goodness. it's the only thing they've had because they haven't been together. Yeah. So it's all been on social media and through yeah. group texting and boy yeah. has really skewed their reality big time. It, it has, you know, my, my son, who's a senior, um, they, they were out, then they were in, they were, then they were half, you know, they were doing hybrid learning and all that and they're back but he he texts me from school in the middle of the day just saying i am so over this everyone's so over this they're yeah. over it you know they want to touch each other they don't want they want he's so over not seeing there's a couple students he doesn't know what they look like because yeah. they're new and he they, they, they he doesn't know what they look like you know right and it has taken a huge effect. I mean, I know this also because the school counselor, he's, he said that her door just opens and closes all day long. That. It has taken a huge toll. You know, it's, you know, like I said, the internet is a great tool. It's great. You know, we can kind of converse on it. You can text, you can text a quick thing. You can have send funny memes. You know? yeah, there's, right. there's good things about it. However, you have to put it down. Right. You have to, because human connection is vital to our happiness. Mm -hmm. you know yep. and being a person and all the other things that the kids can do sports music theater the, phys the physical aspect of us you know um yeah they've been yeah they've had and i've had a lot of clients that have had children that have been suffering or they have like three kids and one's doing just fine because it's that child is a introvert right <laughs> yep. you know and oh in studious and follow through and the other ones they they need that they need the touch they need to climb trees they need, and they're depressed little kids out there you know which is really a rough yeah you know yep yep hopefully in time they remember this as something that just to spur them to something greater right you know when they grow the memory of it will um just like some people who have had a lot of trauma become incredible counselors you mm -hmm. know or recovery people or some of those things you know Sure. So, you know, I, I try to, to, I try to remind people that there is a higher purpose in everything and, and it's noticing it and beckoning it out, you know, mm -hmm. that really helps us to move forward right. in our lives as, and not only individually, but as a collective, you know, mm -hmm. like I tell people like, close the book, move forward. Let's move forward. Let's not keep going into this, you know, like, let's, let's point our heads in the direction of the horizon rather than in the past. Yeah. You know, absolutely. That's, that's better progress, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, I want to circle back to, you know, a point you were making about what you're experiencing right now. And I wanted to ask you about that a little further because I am seeing more than ever people just making these transformative shifts, these huge changes you know, this past year through COVID, it seems like there's energetically just this big shift that's taking place. Like you said, I'm seeing people taking huge career leaps, changing mm -hmm. themselves dramatically. Mm -hmm. And then there's this like energy in the universe that almost seems to be like you say, spurring this along. 
you know, can you peel that away a little bit? What's yeah, actually, you know, it's funny. I tell people all the time, and you know, this is what I say because I, I know it, is get to know some astrologers, okay? Because yeah. astrology is all pointing to this. It has been for a long time. I mean, I'm going to air quote it just because it's, these are terms, but, and I'm, I'm not an astrologer, although I know astrology really well is we're, you know, we're basically entering into, and we are in the age of Aquarius, which means that, and heart, it's, I'd have to go into a whole diatribe of, of astrology, which, you know, it's too many, it's too deep, but essentially the way that the planets are all moving is they're moving away from um, the world of a structured sort of um, industrial age into technology and advancement, but are, around what was ruled by Aquarius, which is community. Hmm. So people wanting to like switch careers and maybe find a new purpose and meaning is they're being pushed by something that may have a broader outreach in time, even if it's for their own happiness or their, their life is better. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like, let's say if it's a, they change to own their own business or uh, go from a tech field into hands-on something or whatever. Yeah. It just, we're, we're being spurred by this need for a change that we don't know is coming yet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's like, we can't see 20 years from now, but something inside of us knows it's there mm -hmm. and it doesn't match the past at all. That whole like heavy, we're moving out of a lot of planets in earth with all due respect to earth signs, you know, because I love them. Yeah. But that is structure, responsibility, money. We're moving into a different arena as we move into Aquarian nature, which is all a community. It's societal. It Aquarius is ruled by Uranus, which rules the internet. Hmm. Wow. So like this podcast is, this is natural. You wanting to do this, this is a natural course of your growth. Right. Because, you know, you said you don't want it to anybody to, or you don't care if anybody sees it, right. which is good. Um, but but it, it's in your nature to know that you need to have a voice again. Right. You get what I'm saying? I so I think that everybody feels this, but they don't understand it. And some do, mm -hmm. some do like some people are just, hey, this is going to sound weird, but I'm getting a lot of like, I'm just fed up. Right. I'm just kaput. I'm fed up. I'm, I'm done. Mm -hmm. um, and around a variety of subjects, you know? Yep. Like, the word like over it <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> over it yep yeah yep. um and that is spurring people to change i mean that as you know it like let's say in when a relationship fails or something mm -hmm. um your natural you cut it's always painful it's always hard it's always uncomfortable but then there comes a day when you just know right you get what i'm saying mm -hmm. that's sort of what's happening to a lot of people Mm -hmm. and and the interesting thing is there's a lot of fate and destiny in some of these things like people are losing their jobs all of a sudden that right. they thought they wanted to keep right you yep. see what i mean yeah um or uh when we had the lockdown and stuff a lot of the people that were in colleges went home to study and then realized they didn't want to go to that college anymore it's mm -hmm. very interesting it's like a huge rearrangement you know it's like universe is up there with this new chessboard that has new colors and more squares. And we we're all trying to figure out how to play the game, you know, where we belong on the board. Yeah, exactly. Where, yeah. where do we belong? Where, where, where am I? Where's my King? Where's my queen? <laughs> right. right. And that's you know? more present now than it has ever, at least in my existence. It is. It is. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, pretty crazy and cool. I mean, but it's a it, man, it, it does make you say, how could someone not believe or dismiss astrology or what have you because like you said i mean it's always there but it's almost more evident now what you're saying is happening astrologically and what's happening mm -hmm. in this physical yeah. reality are so lined up i don't know how yeah. anyone could deny that well i tell people about astrology i said well first it takes a while to study it and understand it but you could follow there's a lot of incredible astrologers who have podcasts and um youtubes and and shows mm -hmm. and books and um but not only that, I, you know, everyone freely talks about the full moon all the time, right? I mean, that's yeah. like common knowledge. Everyone's like, oh, it must be crazy full moon. It's like, oh, I couldn't sleep, I couldn't sleep because of the full moon, right? Right. And I said, you know, if you believe in the full moon, then you got to understand there's other planets that have mag magnetic pull on the planet. And that means they also affect you. Sure. You know, it's, and everyone jokes about Mercury retrograde, you know? Right. And then 
a couple of people that I know like used to poo poo it and then to be like, oh, maybe there is something to this because I didn't, I didn't want, I didn't believe in it. And then this and this and this happened. I said, but you just have to understand. It's like one of those, um, I don't know if you remember, do you remember the cosmic muffin? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. He was an astrologer that used to be on WBLM in the mornings. Okay. Yeah. And I used to listen to it, him because he would talk about the astrology and uh, the current astrology. But then his closing line was, um, remember it's a wise person who rules the stars and it's a fool who's ruled by them it's it's a, all everything like that is like know the knowledge but don't let it consume you to the point of like let's say not signing a contract during mercury retrograde right. if you have to if you get a new job it could be that you're supposed to sign it during maybe the destiny is that so that it can you're you can negotiate further your contract later you get right. what i'm saying sure so yeah. um you know it's yeah. it's that's why I tell people to know themselves, you know, know yourself and then know your, your spirit, your soul mm -hmm. and take it from there and then learn about astrology. <laughs> right. like, like the internet, use it as a tool to help. Exactly. You. Exactly. Use it as a tool, just like a hammer and a nail, you right. know, and they're handy and they help us and they build our, our foundations and homes. Mm -hmm. Are there um, other um, consistent messages that you've been getting lately or, you know, over the past while that sort of been recurring, um, you know, through your readings or just through your meditations and in life that might be interesting to, to share? Yeah. Um, sort of the consistent energy that I get. And it's funny, um, I had an old website, but, and I, unfortunately lost all my blogs on that. I've been blogging for eons, yeah. but my new website still has, you know, a lot of blogs. People can go read them and can maybe scan them, go back in time and sort of thematically pick what constantly comes up through my little channeled messages. And one of them is, well, the consistent one that I get is about people judging, not judging others. Mm -hmm. Like, like pull, pull your hands off the wheel of judgment because it's going to just kick you in the butt in the end, you know, um, that and no fear, like do not, do not be fearful mm -hmm. of things because fear is an intuition blocker. And I would say that's the most consistent that and get outside and get in touch with yourself. That's basically the strongest one I get is know yourself and know your soul mm -hmm. through meditation and quiet and yeah, turning turning off the news. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that's been like consistent for years. I mean, I'm talking. I was being told to write a, to talk about that in like 2004, three, 2001. Really long time ago. Yeah. To sort of just stop paying attention to the news flood that's that's coming at you constantly. Right. So you much. know. There's a great line in the Simon and Garfunkel song called, I get all my news from the weather report. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can gather all I need from the weather report. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what I do. I pop onto the, you know, our local TV stations online and I click on the weather. Yeah, exactly. Right. Well, cause you know, we're all, you're going to find out what you need to find out. Right. You always do. But the problem is, is it's, um, it feeds into the fear and it just knocks us over with anxiety. And then when you're anxious and fearful, you can't get clear. You don't receive not only your own intuition, but kind of even daily directives. Like, a, like it, it, it clogs you from being able to follow through on a project that you were gonna do for your house or something that you were supposed to do for a friend or something of that nature. Yeah. So um, that's, I mean, I would say that's uh, consistent. Okay that yeah yeah and and probably more critical now than ever that we need to quiet that noise because you yeah and and the other thing that's that i'm being reminded of right now is i'm always reminded to remind people to not only find meaning but to have fun yeah to play to have fun it's vital and i always say when you're stressed out about something, go play, go do some, completely forget the subject, go call a friend, go for a run, go, go get a bird, go, go do something totally that wasn't on your schedule. Cause that's when your spirit guides go to work for you. Right. 
because it's like I tell people like if you're praying and you're anxious and you're anxious and praying and you're oh you're so stressed out it's <laughs> it's similar to like if you're at a restaurant and you say hey I'll have a Caesar salad and an iced tea and they put the order in and then the waitress walks past you and every time she walks past you you're like where's my Caesar salad where's my where's my iced tea she would she's gonna spit in your Caesar salad <laughs> exactly. right. you know, it's like it's yeah. like let it let it get worked on yeah let your prayers get worked on for a minute mm -hmm. You know, a watch pot doesn't boil type of thing. And uh, the universe, quite frankly, loves it when we're having fun. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. You Simply know, allow the universe a space to do its thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Let, let, let things move while you move your energy back into like a more happy frequency. Right. It's you the, know? like a cork float yeah. thing, right? The cork I know. I always say it's really hard to manifest when you're really sad too. Yeah. Really hard to bring about positive change when you're really in the dumps you know yeah so seek help for that and then move forward you know yeah so. just get out there and have some fun get your mind off it do something that brings you joy yeah exactly physical exercise highly recommend it yes get that body moving mm -hmm. get out get outdoors if, i mean even in the city like get that body moving take a walk yeah you know take a hike take a walk go do yep. yoga yeah something Yep. Get all the positive stuff flowing inside your body too. All the, the right chemicals and hormones. Yeah. And get those happy hormones pumping, you know, crank that music, you yep. know? Yep. Yeah. Little disco party, man. You know? <laughs> well, living room is part rave, of for, rave for one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any, uh, any upcoming workshops and things that you have cooking that would be great to share? I actually do. Um, we don't have a schedule for them yet because we're still working on the size amount, you know, and location, but I'm going to be doing one of my group reading things through in Portland, Maine. Um, I think probably latter part of May, and it'll, it'll be in my newsletter. It'll be on my social media when I announce it. We're, I got to do that. And I'm going to start up with my classes pretty soon. I'm, I'm so booked with sessions right now yeah. that I'm trying to kind of rearrange that. But they, yes, I have events coming up and I always sort of announce them a little bit before, beforehand. If I'm selling tickets, I'll do that online. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're doing workshops where you're doing readings for others and you're also teaching those. Yeah, I do. I do my my large my my stage events are like when I do spiritual talks and then I do a group session. It's called, kind of called a gallery reading, okay. where you don't you're not guaranteed to get a, set, a, a full rating, but a universe just plucks people out of the audience. Sure, that, that's my big events, and then I do classes which are like workshops and psychic development. Um, and they are very popular. I, they have psychic 101, 102, 103, 104. So okay, I will be doing those too. Yeah, that's the 101 is really popular. Yeah. Fills up in a hot second. <laughs> I'm getting in on one of those one of these next times. Around. You need to, Mike. You need to. I think you would benefit greatly. You would love it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. It's You're been welcome. Awesome. You're welcome. It was super fun and it was awesome to see you. Yeah, you too. I mean, your spiritual guidance has has made a huge impact on my life. I mean, from the from day one, there's things that I recall very vividly from all of our meetings. So, you know, it's it's I love great. That. I appreciate it. I love that. It. Yeah. That makes that. me feel good. Keeps me going. Good. Good. It's 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 important. You know, it's it's mandatory right now that people It is. I know. So, yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Well, thank well, you. Mike, it was so nice to see you. Yeah, you too. We'll see you soon. Yep. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye, Sarah. Take it easy. Oh, man, she's the best. Uh, Sarah is the type of person where we could probably go on for hours and um, she really can blow your mind. And uh, but I wanted to make sure I was hitting some of just like those important points that I, I want to make sure that, you know, you guys are hearing um, and just, you know, how energy and universal universal consciousness and intuition is relating to everything that we're going through right now in our world and in, in life. And, you know, I'm seeing it. I'm sure you are. Um, and you're feeling it, I'm sure, and just pull, being pulled to make changes, do things differently, really kind of um, take stock of, of who you are as a person and who, who we're going to be in and through this new current reality that's upon us, my friends, my loved ones. So um, in, in as scary and as intimidating as it might be, it's also really exciting. And, and as you've seen in all of my guests um, that have been on the show, that whole theme of meditation is re is always presenting itself. And I, I didn't do that. She brought that up. 
Um, and so, you know, again, now more than ever, I can't tell you how, how critical it is. And again, it doesn't have to be you sitting like, um, you know, in a quiet space, just go for a walk out in the woods for a few minutes, or just go stand in your backyard with no headphones, no noise, no nothing, or go sit on the beach for 10 minutes um, and just connect and then go have some fun. I think a uh, big takeaway, uh, a lot of things, but a big takeaway from Sarah's interview was, you know, don't forget to have some fun because life gets really serious. And when things get super stressful and super crazy and you don't know what's going on and how things are going to work out, um, you know, throw it all out the window for a minute and go for a bike ride or go fishing or, or go run around or crank up some tunes and, and dance around in your underwear or whatever it happens to be. So uh, thank you all again for tuning in. I appreciate it. Stay tuned next week. Misty Coolidge will be on the podcast and uh, she's awesome and a lot of great things to share. Uh, from another really powerful, successful woman uh, here in the state of Maine and beyond. So uh, yeah, thank you all so much for tuning in. Hope you're uh, going to have a great week. Uh, be healthy, stay well, and we'll talk again soon. Mike Robin Podcast is out. Peace.